Well, welcome to our final um, We Watch You series. I am Chrissy Spurdudo. I am the corporate recruitment uh, chair for PwC. Um, I appreciate you guys taking some time out of your busy schedules to come and hang out with us today. Um, today we get to feature SAIC, one of our corporate sponsors, um, and kind of feature some of the jobs that they have available and show you a couple of different ways that you can um, prepare yourself to apply for jobs like SAIC um, and what they're specifically looking for um, in applicants. So this meeting is being recorded and we will be sharing it to social media. So if you want to turn your camera off, if you don't want to be shown, um, that is fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our two lovely panelists. Um, we have Valerie. She has over 37 years of experience as a certified air traffic controller. She's been a mother since 1993 and is currently sharing her experience and expertise as a controller training solutions contractor, supporting the next generation of air traffic controllers. We also have Barbara BJ. Um, she's retired from the FAA after um, a long career serving in num numerous capacities, including CPC, FLM, ATM, Deputy Division Manager, and Senior Executive. She's currently serving as a Senior Project Manager for SAIC, and she has one son, Ray, and one granddaughter, Ashley. Hello, ladies. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, I'm going to kick us off with the first question. Um, and actually, the first question is, can you tell me just a little bit about SAIC, um, what you guys do there, and your personal experience working for SAIC? Okay. Val, do you want to go? I'll, I'll defer to you. Oh, thank you, Val. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's, I'm excited and glad to be here. I have a longstanding relationship with PwC. And PwC is establishing a long standing relationship with SAIC. And so therefore that's, I'm very happy to be a part of this. So um, Chrissy, what was the first question? What do, what do I do here? Um, yeah, tell us a little bit about SAIC and your experience there. Okay, so I, I've been working for SAIC. I just found out the other day, it's been nine years. It has really gone quickly. Um, and just let me say, uh, working for SAIC as a company is actually a great experience. Uh, they're very people oriented. They're very focused on inclusion and diversity. They really involve you in every level of the organization. You have full access to the upper echelon as well as your coworkers. So just that's my little SAIC promo. Uh, I started with the company during the contract proposal for CTS. I worked on the proposal team uh, with several other people and gratefully we were awarded it. And I spent three years in Oklahoma City uh, as director of the training, uh, the contract training program at the academy. And then I thought I retired. And so after being home for a couple of years, uh, this opportunity came up and I was ready to try it. So basically now what I do is manage the project that the company is involved in with the New York Tracon airspace transition to Philadelphia. And so the types of jobs uh, that I've been exposed to runs a pretty broad gauntlet. Uh, the air traffic background that I, I was able to attain working for the FAA is very uh, prevalent in what I do for a living now, but there's also so many other opportunities such as uh, uh, software testing, air traffic control. And because what I learned over the years as an air traffic controller is we get our fingers in a lot of stuff. And when you're doing it, you don't see it. Uh, I didn't, let me speak. I didn't see it as being useful in my future other than wearing a headset and working airplanes. However, uh, there are so many skills that this company uses from leadership to communication, to people skills, to software testing, to uh, project management, graphic design. There's so many, and there's so many hobbies that we may encounter that actually translate into careers outside of FAA. So I've been pretty much exposed to 
all of those and pretty much everyone I work with in all of those categories started in air traffic. So, you know, it's the gift that keeps on giving. And I don't want to tell the whole story because Val at least knows a hundred things. <laughs> Val, tell us a little bit about your experience with SAIC. Well, I can tell you that when I first joined the company just over five years ago, I truly, the only thing I really knew about it was that it was a Fortune 500 company and that they did controller training. And for me, that was the, the key point because air traffic have been doing it since I'm 21 years old and it's, it's in your blood. Once an air traffic controller, always an air traffic controller. And I truly thought that my um, opportunities were limited because that's all I'd ever known. And that's kind of the way they build it um, throughout our whole careers. Once you get into air traffic and you make a career of it, you get out of it and you die. I mean, that's about, I mean, seriously, at, at LA Center, I remember my first 10 years there, seems like everyone that retired within a couple, two, three, four years, I was going, and I know this is a really somber point, but I'd be going to funerals. And I thought, you know, I need to do something else. And so, Getting in with SAIC, I can, I'm can. i going to plug the company a little bit as well. The inclusion and diversity for me is key. And they do everything they can to help us and support us. If you have a desire to do something more, you can do anything you want to do. And as corny as that sounds, I mean, I did management positions off and on throughout my career. And um, at one point, I was online to go and do some of the things like Barbara Jean did going to upper management. As far as I went was um, area manager. And then I did a little stint as a uh, assistant manager for quality assurance at LA Center. But then when I had my kids and they got a little bit older, uh, it was too much for me. And so luckily the FAA gave me an opportunity to get some management training. But when I got into SAIC, and saw all of the different things that I can do as a controller and to be able to promote other controllers coming in and starting out as an instructor. And like Barbara said, there are so many branches of SAIC. I've been involved in meetings this week here in Atlanta talking about AI, all the different artificial intelligence things, how virtual reality things that we can do that's gonna help enhance the FAA's training program in the future things that I never even thought that any of us with just this little air traffic background would have an opportunity to be able to branch off into. I am so excited that I have people that I've worked with in the last five years have gone off on other parts of air traffic on the contract side and have worked in virtual reality programs and things that my mentor who is on here, Diane DeSoya, some of the things that she is overseeing and doing now, it's just phenomenal what SAIC brings to us retired air traffic controllers and the things that now we can do, we can give back to the um, controllers that are thinking about retiring and help them figure out ways to make them more um, able to see what they can and are willing to do to step into the contract side and make them more marketable for themselves. I mean, it's really not that hard. And once you get in with SAIC, honestly, the sky's the limit. I mean, it's amazing. <clears throat> what type of jobs um, would retiring air traffic controllers or those that are already retired um, be eligible to apply to, or would you encourage them to apply to within SAIC? I mean, there are, for for me, I'm constantly pulling um, retiree list, air traffic um, retiree list, and I know Barbara has had to do this as well with, you know, I, I right now I have 62 facilities that I'm constantly looking for retired controllers. Historically, we retired about on an average of 600 a year. This last year, we only had 200. The biggest thing that we're looking for right now is instructors. Um, at the various facilities across the NAS that we support, which is almost all of them, quite frankly, in the en route and in the um, terminal environment, um, tracons and towers. Um, 
There are other positions though, if they're not ready to go right back into instructing air traffic, we have our remote pilot operator positions, even some of our administrative positions. Um, there are a multitude and if they go onto our SAIC website, they have listings, you can do it per region, you can do it per keywords. There are hundreds of job openings that honestly, believe it or not, air traffic controllers who used to think that they had a narrow little skill set, it really does translate to such a large volume of job openings that we have. And I think Barbara was going to tell, did you have the specific um, site, Barb, or was it just the SAIC.com that you came up with? I see dot com is the gateway into SAIC. And uh, if I could piggyback on something Valerie said about the hiring um, uh, opportunities or the openings that we have. When I was at the academy, one of the things I realized as I saw the aspiring students come through there, that people like to see themselves. And so I was on a quest to ensure that young women who came through the academy could see women who retired and were now teaching. Because that is, there's no need to say anything when you can see it. And so I, I'm, I purposely was seeking female instructors so that young women could <laughs> see females at the academy when they came through there. Because many of us, when we went through there, there was no such thing. Now the world is our oyster and we can call it that way and being in a position to do it, we should do it. And so it wasn't excluding anyone. It was making sure we included everyone. And I'm very, very happy to, to be able to report that we made, we gained strides that way. That, that the expertise in, uh, was available. And I literally targeted some people and said, come and help me, help, help us show ourselves to the aspiring controllers. And uh, we were successful in that way. And even on this project, I've had another opportunity to identify because whatever is going on, I, was it uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg who said, everywhere, women should be everywhere decisions are being made. And so, and that's literally everywhere. And so I really, I don't overdo it, but I also want it to be one of my primary focuses that in a position to ensure diversity for this company, being supported by this company to achieve diversity and inclusion, it's a great opportunity. And one thing I can say about SAIC is, I believe I've seen it for myself. They don't just talk it, they literally walk it. They will help you make those things happen. And so therefore it, it's a broad, it's an open page that that as come in as an instructor, then you can branch out. You know, if you want an entry level, coming in as an instructor is a great place to start. And then they provide opportunities, even for some areas you want to specialize, you want to be a, a PMP, professional management program manager, whatever. They provide opportunities for you to get the formal licensed education to be successful in those areas. And so support is support. You know, we haven't always known that, but I've experienced that here, that that, that is allowed so that we can let people in and then they, they add value to the scenery and they contributors. And if, if I may go on into, while I'm talking, talking about recruiting, I've had opportunities in other venues to talk about recruiting, and I just want to make sure it gets on the table. The word of mouth is the, one of the strongest tools. When you know something, tell somebody. So that, because I never really, no one ever really told me, look at SAIC. Now I tell everybody, you know what I mean? So now that I know, and so therefore we have full-time recruiters, uh, who literally do that. And so I think when we're going towards what do people have to do when they're done, uh, there's a couple of things I've learned is that while people are employed by the FAA, I can't recruit them. They can contact me, but I can't go inside the agency to try to get their people. 
But if someone reaches out to the company, then we are allowed to respond and provide information and to make full use of the website. And there's always a number you can call for somebody if you have questions or follow up or you're not clear about something, you can call somebody and somebody will get back to you, even if it's me or Valerie, I'm throwing you in that Val, <laughs> so, so that they will have points of contact for information when they have questions because it is unknown because a lot of us were like under the hood when we were working. We put on our headsets, went in the room, went in the tower. That's what we did. We weren't looking for jobs. We had a job. So now people are looking, looking up and looking around. And so therefore it's out there and uh, we just want to make sure they know about it or know where to find out about it. I, I'd like to piggyback on something that Barbara said is during my career, I never thought about what I could do afterwards. And now it's so important. And I'm going to give you an example of something that I would just experience this week. I have someone that was um, looking to get into the contract side, but they are still in the FAA, almost 40 years of experience, lots of staff time. However, uh, when they interviewed for a really good position in the company this week, they did not interview well. I just found this out. I got the feedback because this person, I supported this person 110% because I know the skill set and I know what they can do. And I really felt strongly that this person was really a good choice for this particular position. And bottom line, the interview group said, fabulous, resumes could be tweaked a little bit. And that's another thing that I would highly recommend is start working on your resume now. Start learning how to put those key points in there to really highlight your skill set. Um, controllers are notorious for being very, very lacking in their resumes. And I can tell you, I view probably about 30 resumes a week um, for just controllers that are trying to come into the contract side. And I'm going to say about 75% of those, I have to tell my hiring managers, the CSSs um, for those facilities, tell them they need to fix this. You need to, you need to fix the grammar, fix the spelling, expound on your work experience. Talk about the things that you've done outside of Working airplanes is phenomenal. It's the best job in the FAA. Obviously, we all know that. But when you're trying to get on the other side, just highlight a few things and then learn how to interview. It sounds so simple. It sounds so basic. But honestly, air traffic controllers as a whole, if you've done any of the testing that we did at CMD years ago with Myers-Briggs, not truly the most outgoing people, um, except for the females. I don't know if any of you know that. The females <laughs> almost across the board were, I don't remember all of what it was, but we were almost all I's, um, our E's, and um, the extroverts and the men, almost all were the opposite, believe it or not. Now in the control room, we're all alphas. It doesn't matter, but, but in the interviewing, I was shocked at how many just don't know how to interview. And that's something that, that's a skill set that you need to have because you have to promote yourself. You have to be, have the ability to do that. So, and, and back to the uh, academy, when I went through in 85, not a female, nowhere around other than the students. And so when I came back um, after retiring and I was an academy instructor on the en route side, 168, I think it was Barbara on the inner side, 168, yes. there were three females. But I will tell you, those three, the three of us, very impactful. And I've had so many, that was in 2017. And I've had so many women reach out to me since then. I remember a lot of them, not all of them, but I, as I'm doing these site visits with my facilities now, I've had, even this week, I had people come up to me and tell me these females that what a difference it did. And I'm not just saying this, but they've told me it made such a difference to have a female there. It's we're more relatable for some of the women. I mean, it's 
it's amazing the difference you can make. And, and that's probably one of the things that I enjoy the most, having someone come up to me and say at some point during their career in their process that I made a difference. And Barbara doesn't know it, but I followed her career very early on when I became an EEO counselor, a young air traffic controller at LA Center in 1991, I became uh, an EEO counselor for three years for the Western Pacific region. And I started following her career and I've known, and I feel so lucky and blessed to be able to work not side by side because she's way up here, but I, oh, <laughs> but, I oh, but, but just being able to talk with her and collaborate with her, and um, it's it's amazing what a strong female can do, what we can do for each other. And as corny as it sounds, we uplift each other, and that's what we need to continue to do. And SAIC is a great, great vehicle to help us do that. I love that. That's amazing. Um, can you, Valerie, just elaborate a little bit more on what specific items you might be looking for in the resume? You kind of covered grammar, spelling. Is there specific jobs or things, volunteering that we should be doing to kind of enhance that resume? Well, I can tell you for myself when I'm looking for just say an instructor position right now, one of the things that I'm trying to promote within SAIC is I go out to all of my, especially terminal facilities. The, in the terminal environment, historically, they only want instructors that have not only, only been in the terminal environment, have only been a controller at that facility. Um, it makes it very difficult because as our controller, retired controller pool is getting more and more narrow, we have to think outside of the box. So one of the things I'm trying to get people to do is look at, start, let's start with, it's got to be the same level. You know, if you have a level 12, if you, I'm going to put someone in at, at, at A80, Atlanta Tracon, I can't bring someone in from a lower level, but say I have someone from O'Hare that wants to come there. What I want that resume to highlight is their specific experience with their, let's just keep it real basic with sequencing. I work this sector. I mean, you really, if you highlight some key things or your experience working with airspace, different things that make you look and show that you have the ability to learn different things, that really, we hire, but we collaborate with local management. They don't tell us who we can and can't, but they tell us who they would not support us hiring. So it's very important for us to get them to understand that controllers have a skill set; they can come in and learn any airspace and procedures and SOPs. And so if they can highlight the different jobs that they've done, even if it was just a collateral duty, that's another big one. Collateral duties as controllers, some of us have done a ton of collateral duties. And that really promotes your skill set being so vast. And if you can just highlight those things, it really does make a difference because now I'm trying to sell this to my management team and these different facilities because we've got to start thinking outside of the box because like I said, our retirement pool is getting more and more narrow. And so um, in the terminal environment, we're really trying to figure out what we can do to start pumping up, getting our um, contract support so you guys can get these new trainees in there, get them trained and get some relief. Stop working these six day work weeks and you know, start getting some new blood in there. Yes, please. Absolutely. <laughs> um, do you have any resources for people to search, um, to go and like learn about interview prep or resume building um, that you would kind of suggest? Barbara, do you know any specific ones? Well, one of the things that I have, I'm a uh, FAMA, PWC, Hispanic Coalition, Black Coalition, the Aleutian Natives, every organization has that. They do seminars at the conferences on writing resumes, on, on interview techniques. I've conducted many of them myself. And so therefore, that's the first place I tell people to look because then it causes them to focus on those organizations and the importance of them being available to FAA employees. See, and so, and I constantly try to steer young people coming into, especially young women into the agency 
to connect. I told one young lady who was being sent to Alaska. I'm going to get back to the question in a moment. It's being sent to Alaska. I said, when you get there, ask about PWC because you need to know about birth. She was giving birth. She actually, she gave birth to a baby and went home, had the baby, came back and took her finally, finally vows at the academy and then got Anchorage Center. All right. So I told her, when you get there, you want to know about birthing. You want to know about babysitters. You want to know about daycare. The PwC can help you. There's somebody there can tell you that. I can't go to Anchorage and help her, but I know somebody who can. And so therefore, the diversity, once again, I learned a long time ago to accept the fact that diversity is more than gender and race. It's background, experience, exposure, opportunity. And so therefore, all of those organizations I named provide diversity. And I think I'm a member of all of them <laughs> because, because there's value in it. That's one thing people need to know. And so therefore, uh, if I could touch on the resume thing, um, as, as Val was saying, the experience, the level of your facility and what you did while you were there, you trained, you worked airplanes, you worked some staff, uh, that's very important. But that's not the end of the story. Do you volunteer? Are you a big brother, big sister? People don't realize that. But when I see that on a resume, that means this person is willing to give back. They're not just on the receiving end. So they volunteer for the Santa something or they volunteer for the whatever the need is. And that's another big thing about this company. Because when I was in Oklahoma, we partnered, I think, with, with Rose University to, for the back to school uh, packages for kids and stuff like that. Volunteerism is very important. That means you're willing to come out of your narrow place and experience other things. Education on the resume. And don't write it if you didn't do it. This is the point. Truth. It's a, because this company has a, a, you have to sign a resume at the station form where you basically validated what I said is what I did. And then they really check. When, when they were, I had been out of high school uh, 45 years when I got hired. They wanted my high school transcript. <laughs> I'm like, come on, I don't know what a high school transcript is. You know, but seriously, because they're serious about it. Because when you present an employee to a customer in the government, you gotta be able to make sure you're giving them what they're paying you for. So resume honesty, and, and, and people don't want to say, oh, well, who would not tell the truth? I'm not saying who would not. I'm just saying resume honesty, uh, extracurricular outside of air traffic. What have you done? Have you had any opportunities? Uh, be chronologically correct. Don't put the middle at the top and the bottom because, because when, when, when as a hiring manager, when I'm going through resumes and I got a stack of them, I start to focus on certain aspects and I want them to be consistent. And some people will have this over there and that over there. So those are simple things. You don't need a professional resume writer. You can Google it. You right. know? That, that is true. That you can get templates ev everywhere. And, and right. what you said, if, it, if, if I have to work too hard and I'm looking through resumes, I, I'm on to the next. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so I just saw in the chat, somebody asked, uh, are left? Three pages is good. If you got more than that, you've done too much. <laughs> you know what I mean? If, if, I, I think that's consistently fair because you got to tell who you are and tell what you did, you know? And so if there's more pages, I've actually was, uh, when I was at the Academy, I had a 25 page resume submitted for a person, for an Academy instructor's job. That was a little bit of overkill. So therefore, tell your story, tell the truth, and however many pages it takes to do that, I can't tell somebody one page. I don't think the company has a restriction on the number of pages, but I just, you know, just reasonableness. If you want the hiring manager to know what's on page 15, then you, it took too long to get there. So just, you know, keep, keep it reasonable and keep it real. Uh, be honest. Be as complete as you can. And uh, as a matter of fact, for me, the resume tells me what you did. The interview tells me who you are. I love that. Yeah. 
I want to open this up to any final questions that anyone has. You can put it in the chat or turn your microphone on. I can tell you that we actually put eyes on um, all the resumes. At some point in the process, a, a human being actually looks at them. And, and for me, I would rather it be a little more brief in the resume. Three, three pages is probably about tops for me. And if they want to highlight something, I love a good cover letter. That's just me, though, because if there's something that you really want to highlight I, and that someone has taken the time to submit a cover letter, trust and believe I read it because that tells me this person is really serious about the points they want to get across to me. So that's just me, though. That's just total technique on my part. I like it. Yeah, and if I could add, uh, no one should predetermine what they can and cannot do. If you're applying for it, you must believe that you can do it, right? So, you know, don't say, oh, I'll never be able to do that. It, I learned a long time ago, if you don't apply, you definitely will not get the job. So it apply. Wise, wise, wise. I love yeah. that. Okay. Can I make a shameless plug, Chrissy? Yeah, go for it. So the PwC mentor program, um, when you are matched with a mentor, also as a big part of that program, you can have your mentor look over your resume. They'll help you with interview skills. Um, in the central region in Kansas City District, um, I've had a couple of different mentors just, you know, that I've worked to and reached out to that have looked over my resume or that you can have look over your KSAs. Um, so with, even if it's not necessarily PwC, but a lot of the local organizations will have different like workshops, kind of like this meeting where you can work on your resume, work on your KSAs and, or just, I've done a practice interview with a support specialist from another facility that I'm aware has been on different hiring panels just to practice talking out loud and giving your examples of what your interviews are. So it doesn't even have to be as formalized or framework of, you know, a, a mentor program, but the PwC mentor program is awesome. And if you haven't looked into it, you should. Yes, I love that. Um, one last question and then we'll wrap up. To enter into project management from ATC, is there a job title I should, should search for on SAIC's website? Diane, look for project Sophia manager. Might know that too. What, this, look, what for, you look for project manager. Is you know if you're searching that'll pop up. Number one, number two. Oh, let me and I forget the recruiter. All right, if I can, let so that everybody know we have two full. Well, I work with two full time recruiters. There may be others, but for air traffic, is Perry Storkson, and he's at four zero five. I'll put it in the chat. Say it again. I'll put it in the chat for you. Okay, four zero five four seven one. 4288. He is retired in route, LA Center, but I'm all forgiving for that, Val. <laughs> and I worked with him there. Okay. He's a good and, guy. All right. And the other recruiter is Craig Hodge, and he is at 703 853 5620. So if you don't know where your match is, these men work with it all day, every day. They probably can steer people in a direction if you ask for help. Yeah. They absolutely can. I've worked yeah. with both of them and they um in, in contract and on those side, because Craig comes from Jacksonville Center, which is yes. the facility where I was the CSS for four and a half years. So I both of them will go above and beyond on helping people determine what their skill set initially will um, make them eligible to apply for. And then honestly, that shouldn't stop anyone because once you get in, again, I cannot say it enough, SAIC supports anyone in their whatever they want to do. If they want to be a PMP, if they want to, you know, venture off into another aspect of air traffic or even go IT, another completely different area. Um, Diane DeSoya, my mentor on here, she has worked with people that started out in air traffic and now they're heading projects doing something completely different, but their air traffic background yeah. helped catapult them to the next level. And honestly, that's what I'm working with her on. 
air traffic is in my blood. I'm going to do something, some facet of it forever till the day I die. But I'm looking at what else I can do, what I can take from my air traffic experience and help the NAS in other ways. So I think Diane might have a couple things yeah, to add. I was going to say there are plenty of opportunities, obviously, in being a trainer for an air traffic controller, which is the contract that Valerie works on. But we have lots of other contracts for the FAA in our account. I'm the senior director of our DOT account, and we have lots of air traffic controllers that help define the requirements for a new system, that test the new system, that understand how an air traffic controller would use a new system. Um, and so there's tremendous opportunities, particularly in our company, because we have such a large FAA account. And, and so it, you can go almost anywhere. I mentor Valerie, and Valerie... Um, recently was promoted into a much more senior leadership position that was part of the mentoring program. And now we're stepping into the next opportunity. So um, plenty of opportunities in all different areas that you could, you could implement whatever you're interested in. I love that. But your skills fit our company extremely well. <laughs> and Chrissy, I just thought also UAS and UAV. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so it, it broadens. It just gets broader and broader. You know, our company trains dolphins for underwater bomb detection, if anybody has a specialty. <laughs> so that's why I said the sky's the limit. And so that's another huge drones. That's another huge, huge aspect of FAA that people gain expertise in that this company quali can qualify them to work. Yeah. Well, thank you, Valerie. D thank you, Barbara, for your expertise today. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. I hope you gloss, gleaned something off of our chat today. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can shoot me, in, any board member, an email, and we'll get you connected to Valerie and BJ. Um, anyways, have a great rest of your day, and we will talk to you again very soon. <laughs>